And welcome to another edition of the Vic State Cricket Podcast. I'm Adam White as we get ready for the game against Queensland. Two games against Queensland, a Sheffield Shield game and also a Marsh Cup game. Uh, Matt Short's with me again. Matt, uh, good morning or good afternoon. Thanks, mate. Whatever good it is the time. Whatever <laughs> it is the time. Um, we talked last week when we had Bobby Quine in about the, the draw in Tassie. It's three in a row. Um, at what point in the season do you start thinking about results and not just about playing cricket, if that makes sense? Um, yeah, it's a good question. Obviously, every game you you look to the to win, um, and we we reckon we've been in a, a couple of positions there in the first few games um, you know, where we just missed a couple of moments where we probably could have taken the points. But um, yeah, I suppose three down and, and seven to go. So um, yeah, definitely looking to to finish off. I suppose the next couple of games before Christmas, um, you know, with with some points and and really lead lead into to next year. Um, you know, hopefully with a couple of wins under our belts. I'll probably rephrase the question a little bit. It, it, all teams seem to be a little bit more conservative earlier in the season to sort of get themselves into the season rather than, you know, declaring earlier, declaring behind, being a bit more sort of prepared to risk losing it to win it. it, it early in the season it seems that everyone's just finding their feet. Yeah, I think so. Um, especially, yeah, maybe come towards the end of the year, um, you know, wickets might start to change and, and become – you know, we, we actually need a result. So, um, mm. you know, curators might make it drier or pump a bit more water and leave a bit more grass on. So, um, yeah, definitely um, what we found early this year in the last few games is wickets have been fairly flat and, you mm. know, tough to take the, the 20 wickets to, to win. So, um, yeah, a bit strange. But, yeah, hopefully, you know, after Christmas, we'll come after Christmas, we can, um, yeah, definitely get a, a few a few wins on the board and, and maybe the conditions might change. You've had a, a great challenge yourself personally over the last couple of weeks. Western Australia, the, the speed of Morris and of Richardson, um, Meredith much the same, but the guile of, of Siddle and Bird. And then all of a sudden now this week you've got Nisa, you've got Stecky, who's in amazing form, uh, the spin of Swepson. Uh, it doesn't get any easier for you. Yeah, <laughs> some um, tough bowls you, you just mentioned. Um, you know, even last week against Sids and Bird, you, you, you get through them and you're like, oh, thank God. But then, yeah, you got... Riley Meredith, um, you know, coming in at 145 kilometres, so it doesn't get any easier. But, um, yeah, Steckity and Nessa are definitely up there um, with probably the, the toughest um, I've faced, especially up in Queensland where it might do a bit. So, um, yeah, definitely going to be a challenge. And then, yeah, as I said, if you get through them, you, you might sigh a bit of relief. But, um, yeah, obviously Swepson and, and other guys there who – you know, going to be another challenge as well. Yeah, they've got so many big, tall, fast bowlers and they could choose three or four of them. They're all they're all pretty uh, impressive. Dirk Nannis is our special guest on the podcast this way. I can't wait to chat to Dirk. He's got so many great stories to tell. But as a fast bowler, he got the ball to swing. Just share for our audience the, the difference between, say, a seam bowler and a swing bowler. Nisa definitely goes into that swing category. There's not a lot of them around the country. A lot of them are more sort of into the wicket bowler. What do you need to do differently and what are the cues you're looking for as a batsman against someone of Nisa's quality? Yeah, it's, um, it's a good question. Um, I think for me personally, it's about using my height. Um, I think getting out and I think playing the ball late as well so I can sort of stand on top of the ball a bit more than maybe a shorter, you know, Sammy Harper or something like that. Yep. Um, no offence, Sammy, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, definitely up in Brisbane, it's a challenge with the ball moving around in the air. Um, Steckett is much, much the same. Um, I think looking at their game in Perth last week, um, they got a lot of lot of the ball sort of full and getting the, the players sort of on the front foot. So that's probably something we'll have to, to look out for. Um, there's a lot of bolds and, and LBs up there. So, um, yeah, I think for me personally, it's, yeah, using the height. Um, nice is probably more of that skiddy, bit shorter bowler that, you know, it's always challenging your, your off stump. So um, I think because they're such quality bowlers, you, you get the sense of you kind of know where they're going to bowl at most of the time. So that, that kind of helps. Um, but, yeah, definitely going to be a challenge up there. And we talked last week about Ash Chandra Singer and what an amazing performance uh, he was able to do on, on debut. But it, it kind of over, overshadowed another 95 from Peter Hanscom. Um we spoke to Pete at the very start of the season. You were part of the program where we were talking about, you know, his test aspirations and how well he played last year. He's already, you know, tracking better than he, he did last year. Why is he playing so well? Yeah, I think, well, the headline that came out of that was that he could still face um, pace bowling here in yeah. Australia. So, yeah, he's definitely um, living up to his word. But, um, 
you know, a few of us boys have been saying, you know, it's probably the best we've ever seen him play. Um, he just looks like he's got so much time. Um, he knows his game back to front. Um, you know, he's always been good off his pads, good with a short and wide one, and that's pretty much, you know, how he's scoring most of his runs. So, um, and just like the patience and, and skill to be able to, um, you know, wait for those balls and, and to be able to bat time. Um, yeah, it's been unbelievable to watch firsthand and, um, yeah, he's in, in some, some rare form. Yeah, it's no doubt about that. Before we go, as I said, uh, Dirk Nass to join us shortly, this whole juggle between back to having red ball cricket and white ball cricket rather than the white ball tournament at the start of the summer um, going from red to white, it's what the cricketers wanted, generally speaking. Um, but it is also a juggle to, to, to change. You go from being a middle order player for Victoria and the Sheffield Shield to now opening the batting in the white ball cricket. How how hard is that to prepare differently or is it is it good to be able to change it up? Um, another good question. I think it's definitely a challenge, yeah, going between the two. Um, not so much physically but it's more the mindset. Um, I think red balls, yeah, it's definitely about batting the time and um, maybe putting away some of the shots that, you know, in the, one, in the white ball you might, you might play regularly. So... Um, I know in the white ball cricket when, when I am opening, you know, there's two fielders out, you know, a bit more freedom there and um, I can sort of express myself and play a bit more naturally um, as, a, as, as an aggressive opening batsman. Um, and then, again, depending on the situation in the red ball cricket, you might, um, you know, I said with, with Bobby, um, you might come in, you know, at three for, for, three for 40 or you might be three for, for 200. Mm-hmm. So um, I think... Throughout probably my whole career of batting through the middle, it's about trying to adapt to, to different scenarios and what stage of the game it is. So, um, you know, you, you see Ash and, and Pete last week, um, you know, bat out and grind out in that day one, um, did an un- unbelievable job. Um, but then sort of makes it easy for the guys coming through the middle and um, sort of playing that sort of finishing role um, yep. in a sense. Um, so, yeah, it's credit to them to, to stick at it and makes it a bit easier for us guys in the middle. Well, hopefully this week when you get to the white ball game, it's not 50 or 60. It, it's 120 or 130 because I think you deserve it. You're playing so well in that form at the moment. It's just, I guess it's getting a reward for effort, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Or being um, your coach here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's something I've um, not given me demons over the last few years, but, um, yeah, definitely get that that first 100. Um, something I've been been thinking about it for a while now and um, not just sort of coming off the ground um, – you know, satisfied with a, with a 50 or whatever it is, but, um, or contributing a little bit it's more once you get that opportunity and, and getting your 50, it's, yeah, it's going on um, to make a big hundred. So, um, yeah, definitely something I'm working on and, um, yeah, hopefully in the next couple of weeks it'll be something I can, you know, walk off the field with, with a hundred. All right. Well, fingers crossed. Good luck this week. Thanks, mate. So the Shield game first, Dale and Field, then the one day against Queensland. Now next, this is going to be very special. I can promise you, uh, because Dirk Nannis never left, never, ever, uh, lets it down, lets us down with stories to tell. He's going to do that next. Uh, stick with us on the Vic State Cricket Podcast.